Hello and welcome, please like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the videos. In today's video, a PSA for rookie GMs, trust the player's handbook. If you think something is broken, you're almost certainly wrong. Okay, inflammatory title done. Some caveats. I know there are a couple of things it is preferable to house rule, though it's really completely necessary to enjoy the game. I know there are a couple of combinations of class, race and features which are broken, but most of them involve ridiculous repeat multiclassing, which GMs have the right to disallow anyway, and don't come online until higher levels. Mostly, though, trust the player's handbook. Making a TTRPG is hard. There is an enormous amount of number crunching and playtesting which goes into ensuring balance across different characters. It is incomprehensibly difficult to achieve and nobody perfectly manages at the first time. As it goes though, 5e is a very balanced addition. There are so few options for truly broken characters that they're all basically memes. I feel like it's every day I see another post about a GM who has arbitrarily ruled out a core class feature or cool spell because it feels off, and they're almost always wrong. I did it too when I started out. I think there is something in the psychology of having all the power over the story. You think you can start tossing rules in and out on a whim, and sometimes they'll make the game more fun, and your players will like it, and then it doesn't matter. Fun is the priority, but most of the time, modifying the rules means that you are breaking the game. You aren't fixing it. You haven't cleverly spotted a loophole. What you are doing is operating with insufficient information. Sneak attack is a super common one. Rogues are meant to get it almost every turn. That's how they're balanced. It is a balancing mechanism which is hidden in the game. The designers know about it, but you might not. So when you start tinkering, you don't know what assumptions led to that mechanic being in place, and what it is intended to balance out in other classes. I'm not saying don't homebrew, and I'm not saying don't ignore whatever rules are necessary for your party to have fun, but if you think you're doing it for the sake of balance, here's a good rule of thumb if you're not very experienced, that won't do you any harm at all but might just stop you making a mistake. Thanks for listening to my PSA, which is not meant to be unkind, and is also directed at myself from the not too distant past. Reluctant edit. So it looks like some people are interpreting this as an argument for rules lawyering and religiously sticking to the script, which it's not at all. Hell, I have so many house rules and homebrews that I forget them sometimes. However, as a few people have pointed out, you have to understand the rules before you can break them. This post is aimed at rookie GMs and people not well versed with the system. If you don't, you risk some players being disappointed, people feeling left behind, it's all to the end of having a happy and entertaining game. If you don't care about balance, and your players don't care about balance, then doing what you want is absolutely the right call. My intuition is that for most groups, it won't be the right call. I know it's not a video game, but it's also not a freeform RPG, and people's expectations are based around being as effective as other members of the party. I sometimes feel like every time I see a diatribe about how they're just rules, man, people should just play another game with less crunch and more interpretation. I'm not averse to games with minimal rules, I play them and GM them as well, maybe even more often than 5e to be honest, I recommend Fate Core. But if you want to play D&D, and your players want to play D&D, then unfortunately that comes with a whole bunch of mechanics to make it work, and expectations of parity between PCs. I think the one from Sneak Attack commonly happens when the party is LV3-4. Most of the time, marshals will deal at best 2d6 plus 3 slash plus 4 damage, and they yet have to attack twice. Then comes in the rogue, who was hidden shooting a longbow with advantage, lands a crit, throws 2 d8 plus 4 d6 on the table and the DM loses their mind on the spot and starts adding arbitrary restrictions. If it is in the source books and sounds cool slash reasonable, I just shrug and let it happen even if it is against the beg I thought would be enough to kill a PC or two. Every time some amateur GM cries about the paladin's divine smite being overpowered and makes stupid nerfs to it like a one slash round limitation or a bonus action requirement, a kitten dies somewhere. I agree but with an important caveat, assuming you are running the game exactly or at least very close to raw and in the spirit of what DND is good at, which I personally have never experienced with any DM I've ever played with, nor have I done it myself, granted, at the start mostly due to not knowing the rules that well as I started as a DM. The most common example is, encounters per adventuring day. If you consistently have very few of them then classes that rely more on long rest and spellcasters, and obviously the overlap between those two the most, are going to be far more effective at dealing with encounters than the rest of the group. Gritty realism variant rules sort of exist for this reason but they are poorly named and don't fit into every campaign. It's much easier to, for example, reduce short rest to 5 minutes, which is a common house rule. I agree with this post, there are few things in the game that are really broken, and newbie DMs should be discouraged from changing mechanics in general. However, it would be really good if Wok acknowledged the instances that do exist, for example Coffee Log, Healing Spirit, Morning Cane and Sword, True Strike, The Poor, Long Suffering Ranger, and issued an official errata. 
Leaving broken stuff in the game encourages DMs to start tweaking here and there, which leads to a lot of inconsistency and confusion. It also leads to DMs fixing stuff which isn't broken, because how are they supposed to know that this seemingly broken thing is actually finely balanced, whilst that seemingly broken thing is actually batshit insane? UA and tweets about how they think it should work, or how they house rule it in their own games. Equals actual this is how it is now errata. Edit, people have pointed out that coffee lock doesn't work quite as advertised. My first DM who had only played a little and never done before banned Dark Vision. He said that it just didn't make any sense. People can't just see in the dark. That's not how eyes work. I was the one who suggested DND and studied it ahead of time so I could check the DM on misunderstood rules. He was cool with it and when it didn't apply we just moved on. He wasn't a study the rule books type. The rest of the party looked baffled by his statement and looked at me. I just responded this is a magical world and most races that have dark vision are innately magical in some way. There are things in this game that may be broken. Dark vision is not one. He had given one of the players, a rogue, a 1d12 finesse throwing staff that regenerated his health for half the damage he dealt. Always, the guy's balance sense was way out of whack. It was interesting. Chesterton's fence, the principle that you should not change something until you understand why it is in its current state. Imagine you drove down a road you haven't been down in several months and found a fence blocking your path. You look around and don't see any signage or reason for a fence. Most people would be tempted to move the fence out the way and keep going. But someone must have had a reason for putting the fence there so you should probably leave it alone until you find out what it was. Only then can you make an informed decision about whether to move the fence aside or not. Absolutely. In absolute majority of cases broken strategies or classes exist only because DMs didn't understand the rules, or didn't read them at all. That being said, Greater Than Healing Spirit would like to have a word about balancing. A spell that was clearly designed with combat in mind and the designers never thought of how broken it is outside of combat with every PC being potentially healed 20d6 for a second level spell. Edit. And just now I read the huge nerf to healing spirit with the upcoming errata. It will be able to heal only up to 1 plus spellcasting modifier, minimum of twice, times. That's even more punishing than my original homebrew that allowed it to heal once per round. While I agree with this on the whole, I think there are a number of exceptions that extend beyond class functions, the crafting mechanics in the PHP and even XGE feel really punishing for your players. Obviously not a good idea to homebrew it down so that they can be making magic items left and right, but it should be something that is reasonable and rewards time put in by giving you an item for cheaper than you could have bought it, assuming you have the recipe, materials, and gold cost. My big problem when I was newer to DMing was the value disparity between dex and strength as stats. Dex gives you nutty AC with light armor, great damage with finesse weapons, and affects your initiative. Strength on the hand makes certain weapons hit hard, but is otherwise used for ability checks and carry weight, a mechanic that is a pain to track and usually falls by the wayside. This is why I try to add, not take away. I want to give my players as many options as possible. I want everyone to be as on even a keel as I can get them, even given the inherent power disparity between classes. I don't want my players to open a book and have to remember which options they're not allowed to take. I want them to open a book and remember what extra options they can take if they so choose. 